Welcome to this Phi Beta Mu Legacy Project interview. It is my privilege to introduce you to Hall of Fame member, Steve McClendon. Steve, welcome. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate it. We have known each other for many, many years, and our paths have crossed in, in numerous really good ways. And I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, bringing your story to everybody out there. So let's let's start at the beginning. What got you into music in the first place? Well, you know, I was like every other kid, I think, in the fifth grade when the band director comes around and recruiting and uh, getting people to join band. And so I joined and uh, had a really started, I believe, sixth grade. They really recruited us at the end of the fifth grade. And I started in the sixth from a guy named Mr. Smith, who actually was a military guy from Fort Rooker and was just kind of a part-time deal. But we wallered through that year and uh, went pretty good. And my dad sat me down when I decided to join and said, look, now, if we do this, it's for the long haul. It's not okay. temporary. And so it was. Right. And I was blessed as I moved into the seventh grade uh, when I really had to make a choice if I was going to stick or not. And we, I was fortunate to have a guy named Rodney Dassinger who many very, people would know. Very familiar name, yes. The finest teachers of all time. I only had one him for of the one, best. but he had a great impact on my life and uh, followed me the rest of my life before he died. We we were friends, and he was a mentor. And uh, and then John Christian graduated from Auburn University. Uh, guy I never met or anything. He came in at my eighth grade year, and I had him all the way through high school. And he really became my idol. He was just, just such a genuine person and... Uh, obviously wanted to be special to us and give us an opportunity to experience the same things he did as he was in band in high school up at Carroll High School under Pete Mosley, uh, uh, all another legend. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those two guys had a tremendous impact. And I, I'd made up my mind probably around the 10th grade. I think I want to major in music and, and try to do what uh, Mr. Christian's doing here at Dale County, you know, and so that carried on through, and and I went to Troy Univers Troy State University at the time, and yeah. of course had Dr. Johnny Malong and people like Jim Mahaffey and uh, Truman Welch and all those guys had such an impact. Uh, till you know that's where I, I guess I grew into it all and and majored mm -hmm. in music. Uh, wound up uh, actually Rodney Dashner, out of the blue, called me, and he had. There was a job opening that he wanted me to apply for. He realized I probably had graduated from high school. He had kept up with me all those years since seventh grade, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, worked out. I went up to Fairview High School and got that job in, in Coleman County. Never been, uh -huh. I'd probably never been north of Montgomery very many times in my life. And uh, that turned out to be a great, a great situation for me. I became a you know, a member of that community, the old school, you get in there and be part of the community. And it just worked out great for me. And yeah. uh, so it, there were some other very fine band directors right there in that Coleman City, Coleman oh, County absolutely. area at that time. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I I got the tail end of uh, Dave Ward up at Grissom. Yes. And when I first started teaching, I got to meet all these guys, the Countryman Boys, you know, the brothers. I yes. think Jerry Bennett. Decatur. And of course, Rodney was at Hartsell at that time. He was the band director at Hartsell. So I, uh, Bill Slayton was at Coleman and, and, uh, trying to think of the guy that right before him that had been there for years, uh, he was at, in his last year, he had retired and Bill was the band director and waiting my first year. I can't remember his name right top of my head for yeah. some reason, but yeah, there were, there were a lot of great people that influenced me my whole career. Uh, it just all snowballed and fell into place for me, you know, for my whole year, my whole life, I guess. I, I feel very blessed, and it, it was a great career for me, no doubt yeah. about it. Yeah, and I, I, mean, I, you know, I, I remember those had, days, yeah. Yeah, I met mean, Wayne Washam over at A-Rab, Stacey oh, yeah. in Albertville, uh, uh, Freddie Meadows, an all-time great over at Lawrence County. I just around a lot of good people, and I, uh, I ran into the minor band at a contest about my third or fourth year teaching Johnny Jacobs. And I think Harry was over there then. There were, mm -hmm. Mike, there were a bunch of guys. I ran into those, and I just kind of idolized uh, all those people and uh, 
had the courage to walk up and 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 meet them. And you know, I remember the first time having an I was scared to death. I saw uh Stacy Goss and Bob Killian over at a marching contest. And I thought, I thought that's Stacy Goss. That, that's the guys at Haverville. I just walked up and told them where I was, and they treated me like I was one of them, you know. Mm -hmm. And I learned early on that Johnny Jacobs did the same thing to me when I walked up to him for the first time and introduced myself. I just wanted to know him. I just wanted to know, you know, how do you do this? <laughs> you know, and so, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I think a lot of us have the same stories over the years. We run into those people and find out just how genuine they are. And, and they have that same passion to share music and, and allow other people to, you know, yeah. enjoy them. Abs absolutely. Yeah, you know, and as I'm talking to different Hall of Fame members, there's some names that just keep coming up over and over. Truman Welch is one of them. Johnny absolutely. Jacobs is another. And absolutely. you know, and everybody I talk to, they have stories of their mentors and people that took an interest in them. And you know, and, and Johnny was one of them. And right. then he just kind of pays it forward. As well, you do as well. Hey. You're one of them too. <laughs> oh. I can remember many times talking to you over the years, you know, at AMEA and all state. Yeah. Uh, Booth used to do the, uh, the books. Ed, Ed Sueda. Yeah, yeah. I used to do yeah. those for years. And we all, everybody always looked forward to going by and seeing what he had new and all the things oh. he was doing that you were representing. So, Ab yeah, absolutely. Was, you know, and, and I, I think, you know, any young band director that's listening to this interview you know, just going up and introducing yourself to to the you know, the big name person, and what you find is those people they are so down to earth, and they're willing to help, and you know they and, and actually they don't think of you as a dummy. They think you're the smartest guy in the room because when you pick somebody to go and introduce yourself to and ask for help, look who you picked. <laughs> so, absolutely. Absolutely. One of my favorite stories of all time when I went to Midwest one year and I was walking through the hills and Dr. Long comes out of this bar or restaurant or whatever and grabs me, hugs me. And says, hey, I'm glad you're here. Come in here. I want you to meet some guys. Well, I didn't have any idea what I was walking into. I walk into Harry Beijing and all these big <laughs> yeah. 10 guys. And yeah. I think uh, Fred Fennell was in there. There's all these, it's a, kind of a fluid place, you know, and yeah. I'm standing there thinking, what am I doing here? And I'm trying to get out. You know how Dr. Long was. I mean, he's going to... And all those guys, even then, just talked mm -hmm. to me like I was just one of them. You know, they were all just as nice and kind. And, and I think that's what we all need to spread. Especially, I try to tell these young guys down here. I was talking to some today. I said, the biggest thing you can do, mistake you can make is never asking. Ne mm -hmm. You know, when you run up on somebody that you know they've had a good band, or you know they've been a good teacher, they're more than happy to share their ideas with you and share what you can do better, how you can have a good band, you know. And that's, that's really what it's all about, I really think. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Now, how many how many years at Fairview? I was at Fairview for 10 and a half years, and uh -huh. then I, I moved to Dothan. I was originally from a little town called Midland City, Alabama, which is just north Can't, of Dothan. Thanks. Can't say that I've heard of that one. I've heard of a lot of small towns in Alabama, but you probably know where Dothan is and where Ozark oh, is. Oh yeah, Midlands kind of in between those two. And uh, went to Dale County High School. So uh, and and you know that's really kind of what brought me back. My mom had passed away in '84, and my my dad was getting up in age, so we we had a chance to come back to Dothan, and uh, we did, and we stayed there for 28 and a half years. It was it uh -huh. was a good. Fun. Yeah, uh, and I, I had some really great mentors down here as well. Just always somebody there. Like one of my dearest friends today is Pascal Ward. He was the band director over at Bainbridge. He kind of took me under his wing. And uh, a guy named Bill Hickman, who was a pretty prominent band yes. director oh, in yeah. Good Day over at Enterprise, he, he was really good to me. But uh, Pascal, has, the whole time I was at Dothan, he was always so good to help me and mentor me and Give me a lot of opportunities over the life journey. So a lot of good guys, really. I, I couldn't give enough kudos to like Stacy Goss. He was always so good to me. And uh Wayne Washam, you know, Wayne was just such a treasure. He just I know everybody knows Wayne that's been around very long and he was just a and and everybody that knows him likes him. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's my 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 favorite Wayne Washam 
quote was, you know, there, there's some kids that there's some kids the band needs, and there's some kids that need the band. That's right. Yeah, that's absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, and if we lose sight of that, then you yeah. know we lost the major purpose of band. I think is absolutely. Yeah, good place yeah. for everybody if, if it's done right. So 20, 28 years at uh, at Dothan. And tell us a little bit about your son because your son seems to be a chip off the old block. Well, he's a he's a lot better chip than I. He's done a, <laughs> I'm really proud of him. He's done a fantastic job. And you know, he he went into Phi Beta Mu a couple of years ago, thanks mm -hmm. to my good friend Gary Taylor's uh, mentorship of him. And uh, but he's doing a great job, and he's been at Rehoboth for 22 years now. He's on his 22nd year, and they built quite a pro quite a program there done a fantastic job yeah. i mean he really has he, he's just amazing i'm just so proud of him and uh he, he he's had some really fine bands the last several years they've just he plays you know high level literature he, I when he was in high school i started taking him down to rodney dastry and moved to rutherford had some incredible bands mm -hmm. and at least twice a year i would take him down there and we would just sit and watch rodney's rehearsals uh we, we most every year I guess, especially since he's been teaching, we drive over to uh, District 1 in Florida over in Fort Walton Beach area, which is one of the premier band yes. areas yeah. in the country. So he's been exposed to all the people I was his whole life and exposed to all of that. And, and I've always tried to expose him to the really good programs. And uh, I think he's paid attention. I think he, he you know, he listened. I, and I believe so. Yeah. Paid attention. I, I, I was really proud. He had a great performance at, uh, Robert Band at AMEA last year. I'm just mm -hmm. real, real proud of them. Yeah, that that you know that's quite an honor, you know, to to be able to play your own MEA, play for your peers, yeah, play for people who some of whom who were your mentors and and that sort of thing. That you know that that is just a great experience. So uh, now that you've retired, but, what yeah, are you doing? I mean, what are you doing with yourself now? Post retirement. Well, actually, um, right when I retired, I had two opportunities, two friends. Uh, one was uh, a guy named Shannon Collins here, Screen Tech down here in Dothan. I went to work for him selling t shirts and different types of apparel. And uh, also at the same time, within a week's time, David Brandon had started Southern Performances. Uh, mm -hmm. So I went to work with them too. So I do, I'm, I'm in contact with band a lot. I, I do any kind of band supplies. Uh, I don't, I don't work regular at it. I don't work every day, but I work, you know, when I want to. And I've got a lot of great friends and customers that are real faithful to me, and uh, it's been good for me. I've been doing that now for eight years. So, uh, wow, it's been, it's been, I, I didn't realize it's been that long since you retired. Been retired eight years. <laughs> wow, wow. Well, this this is great. Any other words of wisdom that you'd like to pass on, especially to those you know those young folks? You know, it it, it seems like only yesterday I graduated from college and you know was starting that first year. Yeah, I know uh, the truth. And I, you know, I I enjoy I, I enjoy the bands, and I I I went. I'm look thinking back at AMEA. I mean MPA MPA this year over here down here in District Eight, and how how much improvement it's made. The district's made. So many really good young band directors. Uh, mm -hmm. So I got to give a shout out to all of our colleges, uh, all the colleges in the state for preparing these kids to come out and be teachers. And and I, you know, I I think they're more advanced I know than I was when I came out. And I think the greatest wisdom we can give them is just like we talked about earlier: uh, reach out to your mentors, Re find a mentor, find many mm -hmm. mentors, <laughs> and uh, reach out to them and, and listen. Listen to what they say because uh, they have a lot of words of wisdom. There's no question about it. Absolutely. Well, Steve, this is great. Thank you so much for spending the time with me. And I, I know many, many people are going to enjoy, uh, you know, what you have had to say. Uh, well, I evening. appreciate it, Frank. And I, like I say, I'm just a humble guy that's fortunate to be where I've been. I, uh -huh. I was just to be what I feel like I have represented is a B flat guy. If you'll just work hard and, uh, you know, do a good job every day, be consistent in what you do, get somewhere and stay there and teach uh -huh. and build something. Uh, that's what I did. I didn't do anything monumental or great, but uh, 
I feel like I did a, a, a good job for my communities and my school systems that I work for. I uh, always try to make them proud and give them something they can be proud of. And I think that's that's what we need to, you know, be sure to focus on with our our jobs. We don't need to be too, I think sometimes we get a little too competitive minded and these competitive things. I think sometimes we can lose the major purpose of, of what we're about. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's a great career. I have no no regrets and uh, I'd do it all over again for sure. Fantastic. Steve, Steve McClendon, Phi Beta Mu, Hall of Fame. Thank you, Frank. It's a pleasure.